Hello guys, welcome back to a very, very special episode of Everyday EDC. Remember how I said I'm only unboxing one knife at a time? Well, that goes out the window for this package. This package is sent in by Jake, who watches the channel, and uh, he always surprises me. Last time he told me he wanted two knives sharpened and then send it, sent me like freaking 12 knives and donated like three of them to the channel. So I sincerely hope he does not donate any anything to the channel. That would be awful. Because he's already donated so much. But I'm excited to open this. I'm going to move this package off the site. His address is underneath here, so I don't want anybody to see it. So I'm going to move it off site. We're going to open it with the Kershaw Launch 10. And I'm just going to take them out one by one. This isn't going to be my typical unboxing where I overview each knife. I'm just going to feel it, look at it, get a quick feel, and move on so this thing doesn't last 30 minutes, and you can tell that it's very heavy, so I can't, I have no idea what this dude's got in here, but we're super excited to check it out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jake, for sending these in, dude. Oh my gosh, you give me so much content to do. Um, yeah, it's just fantastic. So genuine, genuine, dude. Everybody thank Jake for the content that he provides for this channel. I mean, it's, it's great. Moving on. We're moving this off to the side, and like I said, I don't want anybody to see the address or anything of that nature but let's see what we got going on here okay let me make sure i don't think he's got oh no he looks like he's got some expensive stuff in here please don't dude all right so here's the first unboxing Oh, man. Wow. How does this work? This is a magnet, right? Oh, yeah. So this isn't charged, but this is a magnet that... What is this? The Baton 2. The S2R Baton 2 by Olight. He's trying to get me into flashlights, and it's kind of working, and I'm excited about this guy. This is super cool. For a second here, I thought that this was chapstick. And I was like, dude, what are you trying to say, man? So there's no battery in here. Let's see what we got. See if this provides anything. I, I don't know if this is going to be any type of charge or not, but let's see. Nope. That's all right. I don't want it to be. Because it seems brand new. I can't tell if it is. But you shouldn't send a charged battery through the mail. Anyways. This. Is also in the package. And I don't know what this is. This is a slip joint. Brother. One knife. One life. Oh man. BG10 blade as you can see there. Just a very cool traditional slip joint blade. Not slip joint, it's a lockback. Look at that. Just an old school lockback style knife. Kind of like your Buck 110. Not at all like it, but traditional like it, right? Very, very cool. I'm not very good at reviewing these. I'm going to give this one my best shot. And we're going to take it from there. He has also sent in a Spyderco clip, which I believe he donated to the channel. I'm going to have to follow up with him on that. And there's hardware in here, so... That would be so cool because I'm going to mount that on my Spider Co. smock if that's the case. Um, I would have to follow up with him, but I'm pretty sure that's what he did. Oh, man. Dude, I'm so excited. We're gonna, I'm going to set these off and then show them all at the end. We're just going to take these out one by one or two by two, depending on how he's got these packaged. So, second. This looks like a boker. I don't know. I've never... Oh, shit. I've never held a boker in my hands, but it just reminds me of the way these scales are. It reminds me of a boker. This seems like a boker automatic. Let's see. Oh, God. Uh, those of you that have seen my unboxing of the Kershaw Launch 6, and I was complaining about the spring strength. Yeah, not here. Jesus. Awesome. A little bit of blade play, bro. You guys know me with my blade play drives me a little nuts 
see if we can fix this and see if it still fires. I don't like messing with other people's blades as much as my own, like as far as tweaking them and whatnot, but uh, that's, the, you know, the Launch 6 never would have made it even that far. Oof. A little bit of blade play. So that's all right. I may or may not, depending on his permission, see if I can do anything about that, but wow. Does this have a, anything on it? And I apologize. I'm not going to know a lot of these models and exactly what they are, but kudos to Boker for doing this. Just, oh, fire so hard. That is so cool. So very cool. Next. P801SF. So I reviewed the P861, I believe. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, it's probably the same problem, but it does have a flipper tab, so it's easier. Yeah. So I reviewed the P861, I believe I did. And this reminds me very, very similar to it. The thumb studs are the same. It just looks like a slightly larger knife, and it's a drop point versus a worn cliff. The action on these are actually really good and satisfying to open. The only problem I had with the original, what seems to be still on this one, is that the frame, the moment you touch it, it's locked into place. You really got it focus on not putting it on there. I talked about that with some other frame locks. Some do it, some don't. So, let's see here. Is this having a... Yeah. So this is a Rike P801 S P801 SF. Like I said, I think the one I did was a P861. Very cool. What feels awesome about this is that this is a straight metal handle. I believe this is stainless steel. And it's thin, narrow, and dense. And it just feels like a quality product. No blade play whatsoever. And the action is very, very good. So this thing is cool. I'm liking this a lot. All right. So we're going to put these off to the side. And I'm going to show you everything that this dude sent into the channel. Again, this dude's got an awesome collection. And once again, thank you so much for sending this stuff in, man. This is so cool. I'm so excited. Oh, these might be the ones that I traded him for. I would have to double check what it is. But this looks like... I forgot that I had this coming in. This is the Pro or uh, the Cold Steel Pro Light. So I traded a couple knives to him, and I told him I like he he showed me his collection and and we made it we made a trade which benefited the channel and and he got some knives that he liked, and uh, so the Pro Light I think was one of them. I'd have to double check. I'm not trying to jack your Pro Light, bro, but thank you so much for sending it in. If it's not one of those. And this thing's cool. You can tell these are FRN or GFN scales, but it is just stupid light. And I didn't like Tantos until recently with the off-grid knives. And this feels like another cool Tanto that can really do the trick. The action on it, <laughs> as I fail it, the action on it is just fine for a lockback. I'm not sure if this has a triad lock or not. Kind of looks like it does. I think this is the triad lock. I would have to double check that, but I'm not I'm 90 percent sure there's a try to like. And oh, this is an awesome tank, but tiny in weight knife. Very excited to review this guy. Oh man. Jake, dude, you're too good to us on the channel. This kind of looks like a best tech. Yep, you got a best tech knife here. I think this might have been another one that I traded him for. And I don't remember the exact model. But oh yeah. Oh, yeah, you can tell it's a best tech, man. The best tech scimitar in D2 and just best tech, guys. If you guys haven't held a best tech yet, what are you doing with your lives? If you're if you're the guy that lives in the sub 100 range for your knives and you haven't felt the best tech swordfish, the scimitar, the texel, any of those, guys, you have to go do that. You know, obviously, you know, you get people that, that, that graduate into more inexpensive knives, but you also have the people that will live in the sub-100 range. And there's no judging whatsoever. You can live in the sub-100 range because guess what? You have a knife and it's going to cut. And if that's what makes you happy and that's what you want out of a knife, then do it because that's what you're getting, right? And yeah. Oh, yeah. The Scimitar is just like any other best tech that I've held. Great action. And uh, I'm excited. 
I'm excited for this guy. This this feels very, very, very nice. I can't tell. I think this is G10, but don't quote me on that because it kind of feels like a lighter G10. <sighs> that action just so satisfying. So satisfying. If this had a forward finger flick somehow, ah, I would be sitting here. You guys wouldn't even finish the freaking video. Awesome. Best tech scimitar. This is like Christmas Day. This is... Oh my gosh, but I have so much more to do. So much more to open up. And then I have so much more to box back up because FYI, I have so many knives in my in my hands right now. Between what I have shipped in, what I have to review, and what Jake just sent, I have like a 25 knife backlog of reviews to do, which is a fantastic problem to have, but in order to do it right, I make sure that I box all these up and I don't touch them until I'm ready to start digging through them. Just like my off-grid knives. I so want to go through those, but I can't. Um, it's, it's, I have to keep with some sort of system or else I'll never get certain things done. This looks like a Kaiser. I can't tell. And I've only had a couple Kaisers in hand. The Kaiser... Mini bag letter. Okay, okay. It's a 154 cm blade. It's a tiny. What this reminds me a lot of is the CGRB Rhea. Uh, this blade, even though the blade stock's kind of big for how big this blade is, it is. Uh, you can just tell this thing's gonna just rip through tiny little slicing tasks. Yeah, yeah. This is nice. <laughs> Oh, you, you, <laughs> this knife. Oh, yeah. The sheepdog. I believe this is the sheepdog, not the mini. Yes, I've been trying to get my hands on a sheepdog for so long. I want the XL version just because I want a badass big knife. But I have yet to review a sheepdog, and this is gorgeous. We got these micarta scales that they're kind of like a gray with like a black wash on them. It's cool. And then you have this this DLC coated blade. It might not be DLC, but I'm just going to call it that. And yeah, the action on it, great. The blade play, non-existent. The ergonomics, fantastic. Like I'm going to go butcher some cardboard with this. No problem, right? And you know what? Yes, the carry, it's tall. But once you guys see the review, this feels very narrow. It's going to carry really narrow in your pocket. It's going to take up a lot of side-to-side -side space, but it's not going to be a fatty in your pocket, and that's super cool. And it's mainly because they took these liners and recessed them inside the micarta. Awesome. Just absolutely awesome. Super stoked on this. Whew. I'm so excited. Oh, that's so cool. All right, now we're on to the unboxings of some of these. This is the Kaiser Begletter. Shouldn't have said it before I got it out, but it is. Because I read the side of the box. So this... Oh, nice. VG10 blade. Just kind of a nice, narrow... Here's its smaller brother, right? Oh, I, gotta, I gotta work on that D10 if I can. Yeah. This is a pretty sweet, straightforward, you get what you get, and it's going to do the trick type of knife. This thing almost feels new, Jake. You haven't used this knife. Wait. I don't think he's used this knife, dude. There's tiny scuff marks up here, but barely. But it feels tight like it's factory tight. Like it feels... I would be willing to bet you that he may, he used this for... Uh, let's see if we can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cuts. <laughs> if I had to guess, he's used this knife for seven cuts. And it's it's a very, very cool, cool, thin piece. Um, I know the Kaiser Begleiter is a very big 
uh, it, it, it's, it's a very popular model, probably from about a year and a half ago, maybe a little bit earlier than that, not earlier, later, like closer to 2020, but, oh yeah, let me wet the whistle really quick, oh bro, yes, 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 Get back in there. What are you doing? I got. I gotta see what I traded them for. I, I guys, I have so many knives in route that I don't know what I traded for or what I, you know. So don't. No offense to anybody. I I make trades and I'm just trying to get my knives on. Or trying to get my knives on hands that you guys would like. Not these fugly looking things. Ooh, the Savivi Wyvern. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I asked him for this because this is one of the few Savivis that I didn't review, and I, these are FRN scales, by the way, which I didn't anticipate, but this also looks, for the record, these feel like FRN scales, but this looks like a titanium pocket clip. Interesting. But the action, oh, so nice. And it's loose. Damn it. You guys know me with my OCD. And it's loose. I'd seriously feel like I have an OCD for loose blades. Um, and it's coming more and more because I'm not... In the beginning, I was purchasing a bunch of stuff brand new. And now I'm not purchasing them brand new. I'm getting some good deals like online and stuff. And so they're coming more and more loose. Uh, and that you're like... So... Oh, wow. The action on this guy actually is better than most Savivis. The only thing that I would compare it to is maybe even the pintail as far as the action, even though they're nowhere similar. Like, the knives are nowhere similar. But you guys know I'm good at failing, and I really tried to fail it right there. So that takes a lot of focus to do. To, to fail it from the finger flick position, you have to... I'm cheating because I'm putting it up here, but the but the leverage to break the detent, as soon as I break the detent. Ah, I got it. Okay. But super snappy. And because this is so light, this almost feels cheap in hand, but it when it snaps open, it feels really good. Like it's, it's super, super uh, satisfying to flick and fidget with. Very, very cool. I'm glad he sent me that because I almost have reviewed every single Savivi that exists. Um, I should go back and redo them because I've gotten leaps and bounds better in my reviews. <laughs> uh, you guys might disagree, but I feel like I have. And uh, I think some need some better justice than the ones that I gave, but that's one that I never reviewed. So here we have a Kaiser. What is this? Kaiser Rogue? You guys might slap me around. I've never heard of this. Oh, no. Look at that blade shape. Oh, that is nice. And it's an S35VN blade. I got to look this guy up. The Kaiser Rogue. Like, it's a frame lock, S35VN. It feels cold. And let's see, do I have any titanium around here? I don't. I don't think this is titanium. I think this is steel just by the way it feels. Um, you guys may uh, say something different. I know titanium gets cold, but there's a different feeling in titanium than steel. I would have to really look this up. This doesn't feel like titanium to me. But this is super cool. This might... What is this? I gotta look this thing up, man. I don't know anything about this, but I love that blade shape. And the action for a tiny little... This is a fat freaking blade. Look at that blade stock. Holy crap. Here's it up against the mini beg letter. Look at that. Like, double. That's like double the thickness of blade stock. Insane. I just see... I'm at 19 minutes. Oh! Hey. I'm at 19 minutes already. Shit. Let's, let's speed this. I'm not going to speed this up. I don't want to take anything away from what Jake's package is. Jake's video deserves to be 19 minutes because he's so cool to send all this stuff in. FYI, Kaiser's little pouches. Ridiculously awesome. This is cool. What is this now? 75. Kaiser has a tendency to write the name on it. The Fire Ant. Okay, I've heard of the Fire Ant. Ah! I like it. 
I like it a lot. Oh man, that is cool. Is it loose? Please tell me it's loose because it's not center, so I want to try and tighten it up and then center it at the same time. Oh, let's see. Oh yeah, so when I tighten it up to where there's no blade play, it's completely and utterly center. Easy peasy. And action, just as good if not better. It's a little tighter, and that's okay. But I can, I can reverse flick it, it's tiny, and this... So I always talk about this blade, my Launch 10 being a perfectly just amazing blade shape to do most of your daily tasks. You can carry a badass knife with you and then pull this out nine times out of ten to get done what you need to get done. That's the same thing with this. This blade shape, this is like, I'm assuming this came out before the Penguin. I would have to look it up. The Fire Ant, I, I don't know when this came out. But if this came out before the Penguin, this is where the Penguin from QSP got its idea. Simple, yet amazing. S35VN blade, too, so I gotta look up pricing on all these, and you guys will get that in the reviews. This is not a review. This is, like, a freaking massive unboxing of a knife, of knives that Jake was so kind to send us in. So, to keep it going, what is this? Is this a Farron Forge? What the hell is this? No. This is the stinger, isn't it? Ow, oh, I've been waiting to feel the freaking stinger. This is great. I think this is the stinger, guys. It doesn't say it on the blade, but the action is awesome. Ferrum Forge is awesome. This is just, the choke up position is great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is nice. The action, so good. And you can reverse flick it. Let's see, is there any blade play? Damn it, Jake. Me and you are going to sit down for a couple of beers, and we're going to talk about the way that you treat these knives. All right, no blade play. And even better action. Look at that. Oh, yeah. This is why the Stinger got so much praise in 2020. And if this isn't the Stinger, I'm going to look like a complete jackass, but I'm 99% sure this is a Stinger. Never held one, though. Oh, yeah. That's nice, guys. Thank you so much for sending that in. I, you, dude, you just sent me like a care package. Like you're so excited for me to open it up because I'm, you know, that I'm gonna like geek out. I intentionally had like a beer and a half before this too, drinking one currently, so that yeah, it's a little bit more not exaggerated, but you get more real, unfiltered stuff with it. You guys are gonna be like, you lush, or you was, you can't handle your beer. You're already there. I know you told me what this was. Oh, this is, is this the Vexer? <gasps> wow. 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 This is the Vexer. Oh, no blade play. And it is just, look at that action because that heavy blade. Ooh. I wish I would have got this back in the day. This is nice. Oh, man. Put that into perspective. Here's your launch 10. Just to let you know how large this freaking knife is. That's nice. I knew I should have bought that back in the day. Ah, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. The, the blade is perfectly centered. The action is so nice. Listen to that. Just, oh, what? And I'm sure I could fail it because it's a large knife. But it actually made it further out than I thought. Yeah, this is nice. And I... It almost has, like, it reminds me of, like, um, the Voyager, the way the Voyager's handle on cold steel kind of curves around and wraps around your hand. You're locked in. Look at how much room I have to play on this, dude. I'm so excited to carry this. This is obnoxiously awesome. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And once again, you're like me, man. I feel like I see no marrings on this blade. <laughs> I'm going to guess that you bought this and used it a couple times, and that's it, if that. Kudos to the collectors. Kudos to you guys who just appreciate for what it is. But you can also tell some of these other knives are knives that you've used before quite a bit. Not poking fun, I'm actually enjoying that I'm not the only person that has a bunch of knives that barely get any use because you have so many knives. You can use one for a day where you don't cut anything and then you switch and you're like, what the hell? Okay, so Tucson... Before I go any further, Tucson TS-129. And I said before I go any further because I don't know anything about Tucson. Um, I've, I've reviewed a couple, but I don't 
I don't know their models, and I should know this model because this is fantastic. The TS-189, perfectly centered. Titanium, you can tell on this side. And titanium's just as cold. Where's the... Eh, I might have packaged it up already. It's just as cold. I know that that's titanium, though. And then we have some actually good-feeling carbon fiber. Tucson, I, I complain because their heat treat is questionable, but the materials that you're getting are awesome. What is this blade? M390. I would be willing to bet you this thing cost maybe, what, 140 maybe 150 bucks. Here, there we go. Yeah, so you're getting titanium, carbon fiber, and M390 probably for 150 bucks or so. Yeah. Uh, no complaints whatsoever. No back and forth. No up and down. Great frame lock. Great action. Perfectly centered. Just a really cool, cool knife. The Tucson TS-189. Probably my favorite Tucson that I've held in hand up to this point. Um... And Jake, by the way, dude, to put this into perspective, guys, on how cool Jake is, Jake has sent me probably almost $800 to $1,000 in value of the knives that he has sent. Maybe a little bit less, depending on the models or how you picked them up, but it doesn't matter. Just in those two Civivis and that Tucson alone, if you were to buy them brand new, you're looking at $350. Bucks. Mm, maybe closer to $280. But what my point is, is that... He trusts me enough to send that, and that is such a huge compliment. So thank you, Jake. Um, dude, you're you're awesome. Here is a Tucson TS forty nine. Let's see here. Interesting. We have more titanium with a carbon fiber bolster or carbon fiber inlay, which I'm sure if I look up reviews, people are going to complain about this. But there's a big lip here, but. It's so large that it's almost like they meant to do it to fill out your hand. I'm not going to judge it here on the unboxing, but that's what it feels like to me. And can I reverse flick it? No, I can't. But I can do... Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. Nice. Tonto. I did not expect a Tonto blade to come flying out there. And look at that action. Once it breaks past that detent mark... Oh, that's nice. I really, really, really like this. I don't know if I like... This is D2. This is a D2 blade, too. So I'd be willing to bet you titanium, carbon, carbon fiber, titanium inlay. I bet you you can pick this up for probably 100 bucks, Maybe 110 When you can find it, right? Oh, we got that little loose jiggle nut. It just hasn't broken past the D10 point. Oh, man. I wish I could reverse. Like, I can, but it hurts a little bit. Yeah, dude, this thing is cool. I am I told you guys before, I'm not a Tonto guy at all, and I'm turning kind of into one. It's weird. Um, I, I really, like this, I appreciate this so much. I love it. And what I love about Tontos, if you do them, this one may not do it. Uh, but there was a Tonto from Off Grid Knives, the Viper. What I love about it is... And actually, no, um, so I, I could, I'm not sure if this was a, this looked like a, a hollow grind at first. I don't think it is. But what I loved about the Viper is that they kept this super, super narrow, but then the point right here, they made that point so fat. They, it, it's, it's a much more obtuse, uh, primary grind going down to the secondary grind that your, your blade is so robust with that one. I, I really appreciate that. But this knife, guys, in hand, this is a knife that is perfectly, I don't know about balance. It's a little ass heavy. You know, the balance is right there. But in hand, I so appreciate the denseness that this knife provides that uh yeah like it just it has this denseness in the handle but it's short and manageable but it's long enough to be long enough you guys are gonna call me crazy because i'm kind of babbling about it at this point but oh that is nice ridiculously nice all right last but not least jake man you only sent me like 15 there's two in here <laughs> Okay, 
Oh, the mini sheepdog. I think I traded him for this too. I got to double check. This cute little fucker. Oh my gosh. If this is the regular size sheepdog, how big is that freaking XL? Yeah. I'm pursuing the XL sheepdog. I might want to pursue the regular size. Anyways, this is 154cm blade. I don't know if I traded him for this or not. And once again, I have to double back through my emails. Some of these I traded him for, which makes four of these mine. And the other ones are just super nice of him to send along. But I actually really like this mini sheepdog. It's like, this does, in my opinion, better just by in hand and the feeling and the solidity of it. Better than what the Bull Mastiff and the... Uh, Mastodon did and the minis did they tried to take Kaiser sheepdog style and I think I get why the sheepdog has such a strong following because it feels like it should I mean this feels right just pause the video just so we can end it anyways talking about the sheepdogs what I'm saying is is I feel like the sheepdogs do better than what Civivi has done with the Mastodon and Bull Mastiff. Some of you fanboys may hate me, but I wasn't a fan of the Mastodon, or I'm sorry, the Bull Mastiff, and then in turn made it to where I did not want to even check out the Mastodon. So this is a Kubi knife that feels all in carbon fiber. I'm pretty sure this pocket clip is titanium. It is not ambidextrous, which is cool. Uh, no offense to people that are left-handed. I just appreciate, you know, clean. I'm right-handed, so... I appreciate it when it's not ambidextrous so that it looks better for me. It sucks for others, though. That was such a ridiculous thing to say. I apologize, lefties, wholeheartedly. But I hope that your left-handed knives don't have right-hand carry. Just so you guys can experience the same clean feeling that I experience. Okay. I was not expecting this blade to be so narrow. Like, oh, it reminded me of the CEO almost when you, when you, when it came out, but it's so much better than the CEO because the CEO sucked. I hated the CEO. There's something about it, but the action on this is great. No side to side, no up and down, really light liner to where it feels good to use, but the liner's locking up at about 40%. And yeah, this is a Kubi. So what model Kubi is this? I don't know. I'll have to look this up. But this is very cool. So without opening all these knives, I, I want to show you and count for you how many Jake has sent in. That I by no means ever expect this, but it is so, so cool of him to do. Um... I, I mean, my channel, I think, kind of took off when he started doing this because I had so much more content. Holy shit, dude. That's everything he sent me. So we have... Well, you can't even see that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. What? You just sent me 16 knives. Holy shit. Thank you so much, man. Oh, Christmas Day. And I hate to say it, these are all going right back in the box because I'm going to... I'm not going to review these systematically. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in, pull something out, and review it. And that's how that's going to go. So, wow, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So very cool. My name is Tyler. This has been probably the largest unboxing anybody's ever seen in YouTube. You guys stay sharp, stay safe, have a great day. Thanks for watching, guys.